I left Houston to go into the Job Corps way early in the 60s. And I was a street fighter of some sort beforehand. And I thought, I'm going to California, uh, Oregon and then to California. I'm going to learn how to box so I can come back to Houston. And people are going to be afraid of me. <laughs> I'm going to have a knockout punch. I never intend to get in the ring. I just want to learn how to knock guys out. And that quick punishing right floors him for the second time. You knew he had the potential to be a great champion. But I had no clue that he would become the great champion that he became, a two-time champion and that he would do all the things that he did. Coach Gilliam at Theo Smith had a magazine that had the Pan American Games in it. But it talked about the Olympics that was coming up with this young guy, George Foreman. He quit boxing at one time, came back to Houston, and uh, Doc Brodus, I think George's mother sent for Doc Brodus to come back and get him, and he went back and, uh, he, and he went on to become an Olympic champion. The next thing you know, Doc Brodus convinced me, George, if you stop fighting in the streets, you can be an Olympic gold medalist. I didn't even know what the Olympics were. <laughs> That's how fast it happened. Foreman defeated Ionis Chapelis in the 1968 Olympics to win the gold, and it was on to the pros. You know, I decided I'm going to be a professional. If I'm going to get the kind of money that I need uh, to take care of my family, I'm going to have to be a professional boxer. A boxer. And that, that, was, that turned me on right there. A few guys made me think about you know, turning my back on it a few times because there were some hard hitters out there who were specialized in destroying dreams. Like the late, great Muhammad Ali, Ken Norton, Jerry Cooney, Michael Moore, but one of the toughest of them all. Now Foreman was tagging. Run Lyle. I made a comeback after I lost the title in Africa. My comeback fight was Run Lyle. And I just didn't know he could hit. I thought maybe they were they say, oh, he can hit, but it's nothing. The guy knocked me down. He hit me so hard, it didn't even hurt. And I got up, and that was the toughest fight I'd ever been in. That man beat me up. He beat me so bad that finally he got tired, and I won. <laughs> he fainted. And then there was Foreman versus Smoking Joe Frazier in Kingston, Jamaica. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. The same poise Big George has been exercising with his family for years and even today. I mean, they know George Foreman, the boxer. They know George Foreman, the preacher. They know George Foreman, the grill king, but they don't know George Foreman, the giver, the one who cares about his family. And not being that way, it extended all these families. There's a lot of Nelson family, the Foreman family. It's just, it got, it just blew up in everybody that came along after that. I mean, it's very few of us can say, very few of us can say that regardless of where we are now, maybe, I don't know, but it would have been possible had it not been for that boy out there that was raising so much havoc in Fifth Ward back in the 60s, could be where he is today. <laughs>